We had just explored abandoned spaces in Gary, Indiana, learning the sad history behind the downfall of this once prosperous city. Now winter was coming and it was time to get closer to our next destination. But our next destination was anything but close by. Now, if you've been with us on this journey for a while, you know that we tend to travel slow. The pandemic was partly to blame, but it's also because we tend to stay in each stop for a good week or so because of the work we do. Painting murals, teaching kids, making music, capturing photographs, documenting everything. All that takes time. But we had winter nipping at our heels and an exciting project to finish before the first snow. And that project was four states away, so there was no time to lose. Fun fact, the engine of our dear Bobby bus is equipped with a governor, which doesn't allow her to go over 65 miles per hour. And she can only really go that fast if she's on a flat stretch or going downhill. Most of the time, 55 miles per hour is about as fast as we go. So 80 mile per hour highways don't really do anything for us. And so we tend to avoid them. And you know what we've found? We love it. We love seeing the Americas from local roads. You can really see places this way. We love driving down country back roads seeing what the landscape is really like and how people really live. We love driving through small towns with their classic main streets and old buildings. We love driving through cities, seeing all the crunch and the sprawl, watching the neighborhoods change by the block and all that. You can really get a feel for these places when you take the back roads. When you rush at 80 miles per hour, you miss it all. That's the great thing about our bus being so slow. She forces us to slow down too. So in this drive, we saw it all. We passed through small towns, rural areas, farmland stretched as far as you can see, and even big cities. We passed through Cleveland with its beautiful skyline and kind traffic. We were moving fast, so we drove in all conditions. Sometimes bright and sunny days, sometimes in the rain, sometimes even at night, which we don't normally do, but in this case, time was ticking and we had to keep moving. Our back roads route and our slow moving bus turned a 10 hour drive into a two day drive. Though by our standards, that's still pretty fast. And now we were excited that our route included another city and an especially exciting milestone we just had to stop. We've been driving for two days. So yesterday we drove across Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania to arrive in Buffalo, New York. And this morning we woke up in Buffalo and decided to come to a place that I've never been before, but Jose has been before, which is? Niagara Falls. Yeah, and we are currently at Sholkopf. Shkol. Skolkovsk? Skolkovsk. Shol Station. Skolkovsk. It's like Worcestershire sauce. Skolkovsk. Kotsk. Station. Thank you. 
Where are you going? Going to see the falls from the Canadian side. So you're going to Canada right now? We're going to Canada. You think they'll let us in? Uh, I see why not. We are vaccinated. We haven't been to China, Iran, or another country that they mentioned that if you've been in those countries in the last 14 days, you're not allowed to go into Canada. So we should be know. able to go in just fine. I don't know. I've uh, I've been doing lots of research. Well, and they have like a whole online system that you're supposed to do, and then you provide you have the proof on your phone, and then you blah blah blah. Well, I'm assuming this is only going to see the falls. I don't think they're going to make a big deal out of it. But you never know. I feel like if they were letting people through, we'd see a lot more people on this bridge right now. <laughs> we'll find out. Worst case scenario is just a show of one time. So it's funny that we're here right now because for 19 months now, we've not been able to get to Canada. So our whole northern section of the trip has just been pushed off, pushed off, pushed off, pushed off. Now here we are. I'm looking down at Canada right now. <laughs> I mean, we could have probably finagled a, an Alaska Pass, which they'll give you. But the issue with that is that they like basically for people who could prove they had a job to do in Alaska um, they would give them a pass and they'd give you a route and a deadline to get through Canada and if you deviated from that route or missed that deadline um, you were fined big time you're only allowed to stop for you food and fuel and so basically we would have missed Canada entirely and this is the trip of the Americas so it's kind of important to uh, you know, see Canada and visit Canada and do community projects in Canada. So uh, COVID just kind of put the grand halt on the northern progress of the trip. And uh, it seems that finally that will start to shift. But obviously it's very cold right now, so we can't be heading up that way at the present moment. It's just gonna get colder from this point forward. So we're gonna hunker away for the winter and, and then make our way back up to this border from spring. Okay, tell us what happened. They said that, that even though that we are fully vaccinated, we cannot go into Canada. Because we have to have a COVID test. They have to be negative. And you have to take the test, I believe, 72 hours before you, you cross to Canada. And? And you have to print a lot of paperwork. So Canada didn't let us in. But that's okay. We'd be back. So it was onward to our next destination. We were heading to the small town of Moravia in the state of New York. Two exciting things were waiting for us there, a mural and family. My cousin Mendel lives in Moravia with his wife Bethany and their son Fabricio. Bethany and Mendel met in Nicaragua when Bethany was teaching English in our hometown. They got married right before I moved to China, and I was actually the photographer for their wedding. Fabricio came a year later, but I hadn't met him yet. In fact, Cora hadn't met any of them yet, so this was an exciting family visit. But first, we had to get there. It was such a beautiful drive. In no time, we left all the major highways behind, and we were driving through lush, rolling farmland. It felt like we were back in Wisconsin. It was a beautiful time of the year to be driving through upstate New York. Just before the sunset, we arrived in Moravia.
Bethany is the Spanish teacher at Moravia Central High. She's super dedicated to what she does. In fact, she reminds me a lot of Senora Fox, who you met two episodes ago. So the week coming up was going to be an awesome mix. Lots of sweet family time, plus tons of Art We There Yet fun at Moravia Central High. And so we got to work right away. We decided to paint a mural in the high school, and it was going to be on this wall. Everyone has always thought of this hallway as a little depressing. It has no windows, and the walls and ceilings are all the same color. We were about to change that for good. As you have seen many times now, there's a lot that goes into a mural before paint ever touches the wall. First, Jose designs it, and then we have to prep the wall. Well, we're about to do it again. We are here in Moravia, New York, to paint a mural here at the high school. This very long, skinny part of this wall, and this is going to be the last mural before we go and uh, hibernate for the winter. Hibernate, working really hard. <laughs> yeah, so the first step is to paint. We put up plastic so nobody accidentally paints a Jackson Pollock across the floor. We also tape off all the edges so that the mural has nice, clean lines. Then we prime, using a top grade primer so that many generations of students will get to enjoy and benefit from this mural. And then we transfer the design. Now usually we use a projector to transfer Jose's design from the computer to the wall. But in this particular location, there was one big problem with that method. Can you see it? That's right. The hallway is so narrow that a projector wouldn't have room to project across such a long wall. So then, how do we do it? A laser level and some math. See kids? Math is super useful in life. Once all the groundwork is laid, the real fun can begin. Okay, whoever's on orange, I'll do it. Sorry. We've said it before and we'll say it again. This is the fun part of doing community murals. You know how relaxing it feels to just zone out and paint? It's rhythmic, it's meditative, it's so satisfying to spread color across a blank surface. We love that painting murals this way allows so many to participate in that experience. No matter who we're painting with, whether it's high schoolers in upstate New York, arts council members in North Carolina, middle schoolers in Baja, Mexico, minors in Nevada, everyone reacts the same to painting. It's almost like the wall emits a calming energy that everyone just sinks into. So it's the end of the first day with the mural at Moravia Central High School. So last night, Jose and I um, did the priming. We put all the plastic on the walls. And then this morning, we laid down the design. Jose, we left really late um, getting the design already at the computer. And then this morning, we laid all the lines. And then the students kicked butt today. and. You can see how much paint is on the wall. We've been, we're here after school and we're just like um, cleaning up the lines and getting prepped for tomorrow for a whole nother set of students to come in and keep painting. And it's been going good. It's like, it's really exciting with this, this hallway. Uh, the principal and the teachers were saying that, you know, this hallway has always kind of been kind of, um, feel a little cramped and like, there's no, there's not a lot of windows, so it's really nice to have all this 
color and happy in this space. So it's been really good. Uh, it's been really awesome. We've been having some good visiting time with family and that's uh, really good on the heart as well. So, onward. When we weren't at school, we were having a great visit with Mendel, Bethany, and Fabrizio. We didn't film a lot of it because we wanted to be in the moment, but we did get some great photos. This was the day we went to see the beautiful area they live in, including Taganok Fall. This is the highest single drop waterfall east of the Rocky Mountains. So our evenings and weekends were filled with awesome hangout time and our days were filled with painting, painting, painting. <laughs> Luckily, the AP art students came aboard for this mural, and man, was that awesome. For murals like this with so many straight lines and clean edges, it's so great to have so many steady hands working away. Everyone was in the zone, methodically taking on each block of color in a kind of coordinated dance. During that week, the energy in that hallway was just peaceful. In the evenings after the kids went home, we kept working on those lines. We had only one week to finish the mural, and boy were there a lot of lines. Without the AP art students though, this mural would have taken twice as long. Finally, we were able to use the projector for one thing, the words. But still, it was a little challenging. Even with the projector, we still had to do some math. The idea of these words was to give the students affirmations. You are beautiful, you are strong, you are kind, you are smart. High school can be a tough time, things can get overwhelming. So we can all use a little affirmation reminding us of our strength and our worth. So it's 3 a.m. and we've been projecting. We only got half of it done. Uh, it's a little tricky when it's a small hallway and you gotta do everything in sections. So we're super pooped, but um, it's gonna look good. Jose is bringing the rest of the stuff in. It's chilly out there. It's getting cold. We're gonna finish the mural by, by Friday, but we're gonna have to put a lot of hours in. Painting the letters is gonna be a tedious process, and uh, good things we have a lot of students. We have a few of them that are really good at painting straight lines, but some of them are not. So we're gonna have to make sure that we put the ones who are not very good at painting the lines to paint just in the middle and put some of the students to do the straight lines and then Cora and I and maybe the art teacher will also help. All right, that's it. We're just bringing in things that we're not using anymore so they wouldn't have too many stuff in the hallway. And now it's bedtime. And tomorrow we're gonna start painting the letters. We got there early to start the edges of the words, and then the AP art students arrived and took over. And once again, they rocked it. Many hands make light work. 
but there were still two more affirmations to project. We had our system down now, though, so we quickly got the words up and even had time to hammer out the outlines. The next day, the students knocked the rest out of the ballpark. We are finished. Jose is doing the very last little bit of touch-ups and our mural here at Moravia is finished. Yeah, and he got done in record time. Just got to paint it Tuesday. It is Friday afternoon. And we're done. All we have to do now is remove all these letters and plastic. And we'll be ready for our winter. Ah, oh, yeah, this is our last uh, mural for a little bit. Though, who knows, some, something might come up. And we just got this, this is really beautiful. A nice thank you card from students, staff, faculty, administration. Just like a lot of beautiful things we said. That just makes us really happy. So, another good one for the books. Yeah, I think this mural was really inspiring for the kids. All the kids that participated. And a lot of the kids that came to our uh, talk with the Spanish class and all the kids that went to see the box. So I think overall it was a, a amazing, an amazing uh, experience at this school. So it's been really nice. It's been a success. So But wait, what's all this talk about bus visits and class presentations? Well, during the week, there were a couple other things we did at the school, including a songwriting workshop. We also documented a little more fun times with the family. But for that, you'll have to wait until next time on Aren't We There Yet? Hey guys, if you enjoy this video, be sure to give us a like, subscribe to our channel, send us a comment below, and for exclusive content and a behind the scenes view of the Art Be There Yet journey, join us on Patreon. See you over on Patreon.